We're diving into part two of this crazy, tiny BMX e-bike build, tackling most of the electronics, some of the brakes, some of the battery bag, and a whole lot more, so let's go. On the last episode, we finished up almost all of the frame modifications and we made this little shelf for the batteries. Next up, we do want to mount the motor a little more permanently, so we're going to need a tire on the motor wheel. It's very easy to do. You just swap the tire from one rim to the other. I always use these green slime inner tubes. I put these tubes on all of my bikes because it has drastically cut down on the amount of times I have to change the tire due to a flat. Not only are the tubes thicker, but they also have this green slime inside so that every tiny little puncture just gets kind of auto sealed by itself, kind of like a run flat. I used to completely swear by these tubes and admittedly they do work way better than the stock inner tubes but it wasn't until this build that i found an even better way to prevent flats they make these nylon or some sort of plastic liners that you can put in before you put your tubes and that is what i would actually recommend from here on out I still run the green slimes, but then I also put those and I don't have any more flat tires ever. I didn't need to do the front tube, but I did get a set of them and I figured I might as well change the tire now instead of later when I got a flat. Thankfully, our frame modifications worked well because this motor now goes in and out of the frame very smoothly. Just have to throw the old kickstand on, then we'll put the front wheel on, but I installed it backwards, but don't worry about it, I'll take care of that later. Next, we're moving on to mounting the controller. I didn't actually know exactly where I wanted to put these wires because you first have to see how long of a wire do you have and then which tube is going to look the best and be the most efficient route. I always try to give my batteries some padding when they're contacting something hard, just vibrations and over time, but this posed a problem because these batteries fit very tightly into this case and I already added the bracket inside of the bag. So with the bracket and the foam you can see where I was having some trouble because there's also a ton of wires in there as well. I thought I might get a little more leeway if I trim down this bracket and so the fabric can fold up at a tighter angle. Or at least that's the theory in my head, so we'll test it out later after modifying that bracket. Since I know this is where the controller is going to go and it's only going to go here, I can strap it down a little tighter and then just install the handlebars again. At this point in the build, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to paint it. I don't think I did at this point and I figured I was just going to install and assemble everything and get it to a working state and that was kind of just the goal at this point. On my digi camo build you guys saw me kind of paint and do cosmetics first and then do the rest of the build but most of my builds I start and get everything working into a functional state and then I'll just tear it all apart and then do all the cosmetic stuff. This was the only reason why I went with the upgraded controller because I love digital screens and dashboards so I really wanted that. Now I'm just modifying this battery bracket that we made earlier and I'm hoping that if I cut down some of the width of it that the bag can then stretch more over it and allow for some more space and room for the foam and the batteries. I know I should just use a cutoff wheel because it would make this process a lot faster although those are very loud and my neighbors probably wouldn't enjoy that because I I believe I was doing this at like 2 or 3 in the morning, so even though it's not super quiet, it is a lot quieter than a cutoff wheel. Of course I could just wait for tomorrow, but I want to build stuff and work on stuff right now, so that's why I'm using the hacksaw. But I did find this technique is a lot faster, where I just cut the slots out and then rip them off with the pliers. I don't really care how this is going to look because it's going to be inside of the bag all the time so it can look kind of nasty and unsightly and that's totally fine as long as it's functional. I do want to clean it up though because I don't want those sharp edges like tearing into the fabric or the bag so I'm just rounding the corners and making it a little softer to deal with. Here's the finished product. It doesn't look 
super great, but it it's smooth and it's not going to catch on anything and hopefully it's going to solve this problem. I even added a bunch of electrical tape just as an extra measure so that it is softer on the fabric. So hopefully this is going to be the thing that allows for enough space for the foam and the batteries all to fit happily inside of this bag so I can actually zip it closed. And what do you know, it still does not fit. It just almost fits, but not quite. I do also have a huge bundle of extra wires that I feel like I could clean up. And I also realized after experimenting and playing around with the position of the batteries, the foam is actually mostly there to raise the floor so that the screw heads are not sticking up and stabbing into the battery. I realized if I remove the foam that this battery bag actually closes. I mean, it's still a very tight fit, but at least it is closing. So now that I have to get rid of the foam, I now have to deal with these screw heads because I definitely don't want them to be sticking up into the battery packs. I did try to work around this by just putting a little bit of foam right where the screw heads are, but that also didn't work. It still wouldn't close, so we have to do something about these screw heads sticking up. As you'll see, just about every millimeter counts when trying to fit these into the bag. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I put the plate in the bag. And I did debate putting the plate under the bag, but then I would need a way to affix the bag to the plate. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. It's time to take a break. A front brake, if you will. When I got this bike, it did not have a front brake. I believe it does from the factory, but my coworker took it off or threw it away, whatever. So I needed to put on a front brake because this bike is gonna go way too fast. This was actually the first time I ever made my own brake cables. I think it's because all of the bikes that I build, I'm usually just removing brakes and taking brakes off of them. You guys were very concerned about me removing brakes before, so here Here's a lot of content of me adding and installing brakes, so here you go. Although I know, I know they are friction brakes and that's going to be another thing that people are like, oh my god, you're going to die. If they made a kit to just install some disc brakes, then I would get it, but it's not that simple. So my plans were, let's see how terrible these brakes are, and if it's scary, then I will find a solution for that. This brake kit seemed very expensive. I think I paid like 25 or 30 bucks for this kit, which just seems like a lot considering this entire bike brand new is probably only like $90. But hey, there's no such thing as a free bike, right? Or a free car, or a free lunch, or a free anything. Doing the front brake was very straightforward. It was pretty easy. Didn't run into any issues while installing this. The headset actually has a hole where you can route it through. So I felt like that was a little cleaner than just running it out the front like on most bikes. The next stop, the rear brakes were much more difficult to try and get working because I was trying to do something that this bike was not designed to do or I actually modified it to where it wouldn't work that well anymore. I had a lot of problems because I was trying to salvage the old rear brake setup and I had already removed some of the mounting points in the frame so I was just trying any way that I could get this to work. I think if I had way more experience with how brakes actually worked and how the cables and the sleeving like works together that I probably just wouldn't have attempted this at all. But I was thinking like, oh, you just get the cable to pull the thing and then that's all you need. But it's a little more complicated than that. Prior to this point, I wasn't even planning on running a rear brake because I was thinking and hoping that the controller was going to have regen functions. It wasn't until I asked the manufacturer if this controller does support that and they informed me that it does not. So I didn't want to only have one friction front brake for this bike because it is already way overpowered to the point where even two friction brakes might not be enough and it might seem pretty scary. So I was just gonna see how it went and then act accordingly. I realized when trying to install this that the outer sleeving tube and where it is anchored actually has a huge impact on how the brakes work. 
If you just have a cable connected from your handlebar to your brake and then you pull that, it is going to make the cable very tight and that is then going to pull your handlebar in whichever direction that cable is going. The outer sleeving and that anchor point actually changes where that leverage and all that power is directed to. So if you have this point at your handlebars, then it's going to be pulling it at the handlebars. And you don't want that because your handlebars pivot, which is why you'll see the anchor point mounted very closely to where the brakes actually are. Had I known this, I probably would have left that um, top tab on the underside of the top tube to be my anchor point for this rear brake. But again, I was thinking that I was just going to do regen and not have a rear brake at all. So I wasn't going to have to deal with that. I tried every way to make something work with what I had because I really didn't want to spend even more money on another universal kit or a rear brake. I did eventually get something to work by using the anchor point at the headset, but even though it's better than at the handlebar, it's still not ideal. Again, had I knew then what I know now, I probably wouldn't have attempted or wasted any of this time trying it, but hey, that's how you learn, so I was willing to at least try to make it work. Here's the anchor point that I found that did work, although it still pulled on the handlebars a little bit when you squeeze the grip, so I decided I didn't want to mess with that anymore and I'll just buy a new kit. After about a week and a half, these bolts finally arrived so I could get some countersunk action going on with this battery tray. I also didn't have any countersunk bits, so I had to wait for those to arrive, but after I got all the parts I needed, I could finally modify this and have it so that it's flush. I would have just bought these at the hardware store, but there isn't much metric offerings from any local hardware stores, and once you start building with metric, you never ever go back. So far I have spent a lot of time trying to make these batteries fit, but I was determined to make them fit because there was nowhere else that these batteries were going. So the big question is, all of this time and effort, is it worth it? Is it finally going to fit inside of this bag and zip up completely? Let's find out. It is still an extremely tight fit and I still have a ton of wires and connectors, but I think I finally got it. The only thing I realize now is that the screws that I have going through the frame, those are not going to cut it. It is way too wobbly, so I will have to find a way to reinforce that. I think I'm going to stop it here because we did hit another milestone of basically mounting the batteries correctly. They will fit once I clean up these wires and we will tackle that in the next episode. Here you can see just how wobbly it is. To me, this is unacceptable, so we will fix it in the next episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. So stay tuned because there is still a ton of work to do. We are doing a massive battery wire overhaul and finally getting this pack to fit correctly inside of the bag. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.